Every once in a while, there seems to be a hot new type of engineering that has a lot of hype. For now, it seems to be nanotech. Maybe it has something to do with how cool nanotechnology looks in the MCU movies. Just watching the suit up scene for Iron Man just makes you want to learn more about how nanotech works. The same applies with the Iron Spider suit. Although the technology in these movies is, well, fictional, we're quite far from achieving that tech, and you probably won't be working on stuff like this in your nanotechnology engineering undergrad. But that being said, let's look at a quick overview of nanotechnology engineering, what kind of courses you're expected to take, the types of jobs you can get after you graduate, and what the future of nanotech looks like. Before explaining exactly what nanotech engineering is, Keep in mind that unlike mechanical, electrical, software, or civil engineering, nanotech is quite new and isn't necessarily going to be offered in all the universities because it's only been around since the 1980s. Anyways, the technical definition is that nanotechnology engineering allows people to see and control individual atoms and molecules to allow people to manipulate or even create new materials at the most basic level. That's a bit of a wordy definition, so to simplify it, with nanotech you do engineering or you build stuff at the nano scale. You would be working with stuff that are between 1 to 100 nanometers, which is practically invisible. To visualize how truly small that is, a human red blood cell is about 7,000 nanometers in diameter, one human hair is between 50,000 to 100,000 nanometers thick, or your fingernails grow at a rate of 1 nanometers per second. That means so far in this video your fingernails grew by 75 nanometers, but you didn't notice it. Pretty cool when you really think about it. It's nanotech, you like it? The reason it's so important to work with materials at the nanoscale level is because they have some really cool properties when compared to their easily visible counterparts. The most common examples of using nanotech engineering is when it comes to creating hydrophobic materials. You know, like spilling water on paper and it just slides off since the paper has a water repellent coating. You'll find so many examples of stuff like this online. You can achieve this by using nano composites or nano coatings. This means that by inserting a nanomaterial into another material, you're able to improve its material properties or its surface qualities. For example, adding silver nanoparticles to plastics can make them antibacterial. Or adding titanium oxide nanoparticles can make the surface of glass reject dirt, which is pretty cool. You basically just made this glass self-cleaning, but the issue with it is adding titanium oxide nanoparticles has been linked to health issues like cancer. So it should definitely avoid human interaction for now. To be able to work on stuff like this, you need to study subjects like chemistry, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, physics, and design. That's a very high level explanation of the courses. To provide some more detail, these are the exact courses you would take in your first year of studying nanotechnology engineering. You'll start off with basic engineering fundamentals like Calc 1, Calc 2, linear algebra, physics, circuits, chemistry, and programming. You will also have to take an impacts course where you see how nanotechnology engineering will affect the world, human health, legal system, etc. I'll be honest, I've taken courses like these in the past, and low-key, they're all BS, but for some reason, universities require us to take stuff like this, so we're more well-rounded students. They're usually a lot easier than our regular engineering courses though, so I'm not complaining. You'll also do some more complex math in this computational methods course, and you'll spend some time learning about material science and how to design materials for various applications. Moving on to second year, we'll be taking courses that are very specific to nanotechnology engineering, which means these are courses that other engineering students will not be taking. So that includes things like biology and organic chemistry. I'm personally not a big fan of organic chemistry, so if you pursue nanotech, make sure that you're comfortable working with hydrocarbons and you really like working with all these hexagons. You'll also take some more math courses in your second year, like statistics and two advanced calculus courses, where you're going to be learning about concepts like ordinary differential equations. There's a good amount of additional materials courses you're going to have to take, like characterization of materials and structure and properties of nanomaterials. In nanomaterials, you learn about materials on the atomic level. It's arguably one of the most beneficial courses in nanotech engineering because it instills a sense of intuition when it comes to working with different materials and how you should expect them to behave, at least according to a bunch of students who've taken that course. Also, you'll find yourself taking some more electrical engineering focused courses like electromagnetism and semiconductor physics. 
Having a solid understanding of semiconductors is actually really important because we depend a lot on them for our consumer electronic products. These computer chips are slowly moving towards the nanometer size, so having engineers that are comfortable working on the nanoscale is becoming really really important and the demand for it is going up. To prove to you how important semiconductors are, you may have heard of the chip shortage going on in the world right now. Smartphones, medical devices, and cars all need these chips, and even refrigerators or electric toothbrushes need them as well. This shortage is happening because the demand for chips is way higher than the supply. Chip manufacturers can't set up fabrication plants fast enough because there's a lot of overhead costs that come with it and there's a lot of risks that they have to take when they're building a fabrication plant. It also takes a lot of time to build these kind of plants, so this shortage is expected to last until 2024. But you should look at the bright side. Semiconductors are clearly very important for the world and nanotech engineers are at the forefront of that technology. So it seems like a really good major to get into. Anyways, back to courses. Third year gets hectic. You can take courses in continuum mechanics, quantum mechanics, macromolecular science, as well as microfabrication and thin film technologies. None of that sounds easy, probably because it's not very intuitive. In continuum mechanics, you study how different materials behave, but you ignore the fact that all matter is made up of discrete tiny particles. But all our lives, you were taught that matter is indeed made up of discrete tiny particles, now all of a sudden that's not true. So definitely a fun course, and you'll find yourself using a lot of the linear algebra that you learned in first year. Now, quantum mechanics is, I'd say, comparatively easier since you're studying nature at the atomic level. Then, microfabrication and thin film technologies builds on the material science knowledge that you learned in your first two years of engineering. Moving on in third year, you're going to have a statistical thermodynamics course. Thermodynamics is an area in physics that focuses on heat, temperature, and energy, and there are two branches of it. Classical thermodynamics, which is probably what you're more familiar with, and is what's studied in mechanical engineering, we care about matter as a whole. For example, the convective heat transfer from a hot cup of coffee to the air around it. Here, nothing is really studied at the atomic or molecular level. On the other hand, statistical thermodynamics explains properties of matter at the atomic level. Moving on, when you're studying nanotech engineering, you're going to spend a lot of time in lecture halls just learning the content, but you're also going to spend a lot of time in labs. In them, you're going to be applying what your professor taught you in class by doing real-life experiments. Depending on your professor, some labs are actually beneficial in helping you visualize the concepts, while other labs are low-key kind of useless. But hey, you still gotta do it to pass the course. Anyways, in fourth year, you'll most likely have a capstone design engineering project related to nanotech engineering, where you're working in a group to build something that uses all the knowledge you've accumulated over the last three years. You'll also take additional courses in nanotech, but you've honestly been doing it long enough now that taking these courses just feels like second nature. And there's a lot more flexibility in the courses that you can take in your fourth year. That being said, to sum up the course structure for nanotech engineering, you start off by taking the fundamentals like calculus, linear algebra, physics, chemistry, material science, etc. Almost all engineering programs do this first part. You then start to take various courses in electronics, fluids, thermodynamics, etc., but really just focusing on trying to understand how they work on the nanoscale level. The second part is stuff that's not really done in other engineering programs. After graduation, you can either get jobs that are directly related to nanotech engineering or engineering jobs that, well, aren't at all. The related jobs first include polymer engineering, where your job is to develop and manufacture materials like plastic, nylon, or epoxy. Second, we have R&D engineering, where you can work on new product development and doing some active research. This research includes studying different properties of materials, creating mathematical models, and using lab equipment to do experiments. Third, we have the nanotech engineer, where instead of coming up with new theories and developing new properties like an R&D engineer, you do more practical engineering work where you take what's already been discovered about nanotech and you use that to design tools and processes to make manufacturing nanomaterials and products a lot easier and cheaper. Next, we have a nanotech consultant where you use your nanotech knowledge to provide companies your expert opinion on their products that involve nanotech. We then have food tech engineer, where you work with the production and quality control of food. You can also find yourself reviewing and approving nutritional data. However, this job is pretty entry level. Another entry level job would be working as a lab assistant. However, everything you learn in nanotech engineering can also be applied to other industries, which means you can find yourself working in jobs like this. First, we have a development engineer, where you work on developing new electronic products. These products don't necessarily have to be on the nano scale. Second, we have an engineering program manager, where you manage the development of certain technologies like displays, cameras, etc. You need to make sure everything is built on time and according to spec. 
third, you can also be working as a technical program manager, which is pretty similar to an engineering program manager. You can also work as a product manager, which is also similar to an EPM and a TPM, but it is more business focused. Fifth, you can find yourself working in data science where you use data to make as much impact as you can on the company. You can create models, data visualizations, or even write code. These roles are found in companies like Apple, Facebook, Tesla, Intel, Amazon, analog devices, etc. I have noticed this pattern where some people get into nanotech because they think working on developing these new materials is really cool. But then they get their first job as a polymer engineer and they realize they're not out here developing new materials every single day. They're not exactly spending their day to day working on groundbreaking technology. So it ends up being not as exciting as they imagined. Because of that, they may switch gears and get into tech probably because it pays more and it can be a little more glamorous than working in a lab all day. That being said, not everyone ditches nanotech work to get into tech. There's a lot of pretty cool applications in nanotech. However, it is still pretty new, so the demand for it may not be as high when compared to software engineering and tech. Where'd that come from? It's nanotech, you like it? Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, check out this video where I compare mechanical and electrical engineering, or check out that video where I explain biomedical engineering in more detail. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace!